All right, um, there was one thing I forgot to show you when we were drawing the pattern that I want to tell you about now so that you won't get surprised when you start sewing. Uh, when you went back to the top to draw your ray lines, there were three lines that come at the bottom of the quilt that do not go all the way to the top sections. And so you'll need to line them up with the bottom section, line them up on these lines here, get your raised line, and it'll be this line, which will be section two in P1 and two, and then in P7 and eight, you have two lines, this one and this one. And that's because they come at the bottom of the cross and their rays only come up to a small section and not to where the uh, upper section was. So once you get those lines drawn in, then you put in your cross hatches and it's arbitrary wherever you put your cross hatches, uh, you can put them. I usually try to draw uh, at least two hatches in each one. If you're doing the larger pattern, you might want to put more than that. But you've only basically got uh, three different color shades in your strip of fabric, a dark, a medium, and a light section. So um, your, your, your cross hatches here that you put are arbitrary, they're guidelines. If you don't match them up exactly, that's not a problem. Now, we'll go to the supplies that you need for this particular section. It's very helpful to have a small rotary cutting t uh, pad if you've got one or a stationary pad, whichever one works best for you or that you have, a quarter inch ruler, and the 12 inch one is better to have than the shorter one, a glue stick, your rotary cutter, and either an iron or a roller that you can roll the pieces over with uh, to press them down once you've sewn them on, and a small pair of scissors. Okay. With that, I've got the sections ready to sew on. I'm not going to show, sew all of them on. I'm just going to sew a few on just to get you started. In the first sec, I always start from left to right. If you are a left-handed person and you want to go from right to left, that's fine. You just reverse everything and go the other direction. But be sure you go the same direction on all the quadrants so that all of your seams are laying uh, in the same direction. All right, your light sections always go at the outside section of your quilt. And I first lay everything on just to make sure I get it lined up where I want it. And on the first one, it's going to go right side up because that's the way it's going to lay when you're done. And then the top, the, sec the dark section, I fold it under a rough quarter of an inch so that it overlaps your raw edge of the one below it. And I kind of place them so that you have a quarter inch seam. You can sort of see your line through there a little bit. And you make sure you just line that up so that you cover the bottom, you cover the top, and you overlap them with one of them turned under. If you like raw edges, you don't need to turn this under. You will be quilting over the top of it. But if you're using the irregular stitch, sometimes it doesn't get all of the raw edge, which is why I started turning the edge under. And to secure those in place until you can get that seam sewn down, once I get them placed, I just put a little dab of glue in that section to hold it until I get it turned over, and then get it repositioned where you want it, <coughs> and put another little dab on, and that holds those in place. Now before you sew, you go to the next section, and this is the, you only do this section at the beginning, this method at the beginning of each one. The other thing about at the cross sections, because they're so far down into the pattern, you usually don't need your dark fabric, you need just your light and your medium. It's not until you get to section three that you're probably going to be using the dark section. And you'll know when it starts getting up closer to the center of the cross that you'll need a dark section in there. Because these come right at the bottom of the cross, the light and the medium are all you're going to need. And so when I place the next section on, I place it right side up just to get it located in the right location and then to get the one above it. Once I get those like I want them, I grab them together and turn them over so that I can have right sides together 
to sew my seam. And once I get them placed, then you need to pin them down. And pins are another item I forgot to put over here, but you'll need your pins. And you can you don't need to pin it here because you're going to be working from the back side. And so I usually just pin them off to the side using the flathead pins so that they're everything's flat on the surface and pin through everything to hold that down. Then you can turn it over and you go to your first seam line. And because of how this is done, I usually fix the seam at the beginning and the end because you're going to be uh, moving it so many times back and forth that um, it's easier to fix the seam or back tack, whichever your machine is capable of doing, to secure those down. And then that way you don't have to worry about um, getting the seams in the right low or getting having your seams come apart while you're working on them. It's the first one done. And then when you turn it over, you can turn these pieces over and press them down. Now these seams will not be sewn down until you do your quilting but we'll cover that in another section. For right now, they're fine just laying open like that. Now you need to trim. And you get your quarter inch ruler out. And you fold this on the line between the section between, you know, after where you're going to sew the next seam, because you've got, see there's where you sewed your first seam, now you fold it on that next ray, put your quarter inch ruler down on it, and slice your excess fabric off. Now you're ready to do the next section, and of course now that you've got these two sewn it down, you, oops, look what happened. I didn't get it folded down properly, and so therefore it didn't trim properly. That will happen to you. So you simply fold it back over, cut that one off, and now you're ready to put the next section down. And again, you want to start with your, your light colors. Now, I had trimmed this one this way, and since you're using batiks, there is not a right or a wrong. So I'm going to lay it this way first, just to get my placement going. And then I have the medium section, and I'll put it in there, and I want to turn that one under, put an angle to it, and just make sure that it goes up and covers all of that angle. And I can finger press that one down. And if you get a little excess fabric back there that you don't want, just take your scissors and trim that off. Lay it back down so that it covers that. And then you've got the upper section. Well, you've got too much up there as well. So again, you can just trim it. And you take your dark section and you lay it. And you be sure you get all the way to the tip up here. You have to get all the way to the tip, and then you come down here, turn that under, and it's kind of going at an angle like that this time. So, a lot of this is visual, and you can trim that one down, place it on. And now you've got three pieces to turn over, but you can turn them over two at a time and lay it up next to your quarter inch seam where you trimmed it. 
and you just have to make sure that you got everything laying flat. Let me get that out from under there so it's laying flat. And then you can see it better. And when you the first one that you do when you get up to these lines up here is, is a little awkward, but it it will work. And then you turn this one over. All right, now you've got those turned over like you want, and so you pin those down. Because when you flip it over, you don't want to lose them. And if you have to put more than one pin to cover to keep the sections together, you can do that. to stay up there as well. All right, now you're ready to turn it over and sew. And this time you'll be sewing on, you've, you've sewn on that one, so you go to the next line and sew on it. And it only starts right here, even though your fabric goes way up here, because you'll need the fabric way up there to get the next stitching line in. So we get this one tacked down. I like to pull my threads through so that I don't have a nest on the bottom. And you fix it again. We got section 3A sewn on and we're ready to roll them over and this will be a little bit trickier just because you have one at the top that I'll show you. So we roll that over and press it down and when you get to this one it's only sewn on right here right now but we're about to sew the rest of it on on the other side but you want a quarter inch seam turned under there just to keep your everything lined up in the right direction so you can Press that down, and you definitely want to stick a pin in the top of this one because there's nothing else holding that one in position. And so you, um, when you get ready to trim, you need to have that one held in position. So now we're ready to fold it over and trim that section. And you get to the line between 3A and 4 and fold it down. And now you can you can get a better idea of where the silver is going to lie. And so you get it on your board, lay your quarter inch ruler on it, and trim that section. Okay. Now when you turn it over, you still leave that pin in there because that's the only thing holding that one down. Or you can glue it down either one. Now you take your section four or the next section according to which pattern your which one you're on. I've got the line going that way, so I kind of trimmed it going that way. And you lay them down first in the the where you want them to be, and that line's going that way, so I want to lay this one down, and this one I want to turn under so that it will um, okay, that's got to go under there. Oh, I'm putting them on top right now. It's real easy to get confused. That's why you lay them down in one direction first, and then turn them over so that you make sure you get them in the right direction. Now that line is down there and it's cut a little bit too long. And I will just put that kind of an angle on it and trim it. And in fact this one doesn't have to be turned under down there, up there, because it's going to be on the bottom. And then you take this one, and it's a lot longer because you have to go up beyond that point. All right, and 
this is the one you're going to want to turn under. And it's going to want to go that way. So you trim it under that way. All right. Since you have a pin up there, you can just simply hold that down in place and repin that so that it's got both layers in. And then you, oops, I forgot to turn it over. That's what you want to do. And so you turn that one over first. When they get long like this, it's hard to turn more than one at a time. But you can turn them now and it, and as long as you keep them overlapped, and then lined up with that one, you're in the right direction. Now you pin them. That one turned under there. Okay, now we're ready to turn it over and sew down the line, the next sewing line. And so there's your last sewing line, here's your next one, and it starts way up here. And again, pull your thread through and fix your seam. one over and use your roller to press them down and again you'll be going up higher so you press that down like that and now you're ready to trim this side. And you just have to make sure all the pieces are turned under. We're laying down flat. Fold it on the edge. Get your ruler. This time your ruler is going to be. Your, your cutting spot's going to be longer than your ruler. And then you move it down and finish trimming. All right. Now you're well on your way. You've, you've, you've seen now how to get the sections done as you get up in here. And you can see that everything's laying down properly, you're overlapping down here, you're overlapping up there, and you just keep doing this now all the way around. When you get to the end, you do not trim this seam. You leave your excess hanging over because that's your area for uh, matching everything up and having enough fabric to trim once you get uh, to joining the seams together. So if you need to repeat this section to uh, familiarize yourself again with the layout once you start again, so be it. Go ahead and do that because that will help you remember to get it done. And remember the dark always goes at the top and the light goes toward the outside. Okay, I think we're ready now to finish sewing all your rays down.